lecture for the today's topic is regarding dorsal digital expansion so we will see how dorsal digital expansion is formed what are the muscles which is attached to the dorsal digital expansion we have to know the function of the dorsal digital expansion in detail dorsal digital expansions ko samajhne ke liye hame do main muscles ko samajhna padega that is known as the extensor pollicis longus and the four tendons of extensor digitorum so this extensor pollicis longus it goes towards the thumb finger right same how the four tendons of the the extensor digitorum goes towards the the index finger middle finger ring finger and to the small finger but in the index finger it is also joined by the extensor indices from the medial aspect same how in the small finger from the medial aspect it is joined with the help of extensor digiti minimi muscle so same thing i am showing here in the diagram also from the third compartment extensor pollicis longus is passing from the fourth compartment extensor digitorum and extensor indices is passing from the fifth compartment extensor digiti minimi is crossing the extensor retinaculum so can you see here in the written content the four tendons of extensor digitorum it passes through the the compartment of the extensor retinaculum and it fans out so tendons of index fingers is joined on the medial side by the tendons of extensor indices while the tendons of lateral finger is joined on its medial side by the extensor digiti minimi so mainly the extensor digitorum and extensor pollicis longus tendons expand over the dorsal surface of proximal phalanges to form a complex extensor wood or also known as dorsal digital expansion before dealing with dorsal digital expansion we have to know about this is known as the metacarpal bone the black line you can see that is known as proximal phalanges this one is known as the middle phalanges and this is known as distal phalanges now the joint between the metacarpal and the proximal phalanges is known as metacarpo phalangeal joints the joint between the proximal phalanges and the middle phalanges is known as pip joint and the joint between the middle phalanx and the distal phalanx is known as dip joint this is known as the tendons of extensor digitorum so whenever the tendons of extensor digitorum try to cross the metacarpophalangeal joints in this area it is going to wrap the side of the metacarpophalangeal joints and this portion where it is expanded it is known as the base part of the dorsal digital expansion and this base part or the corner of the base part it is attached to the deep transverse metacarpal ligament can you see here in the diagram this do dorsal digital expansion also known as extensor hood is triangular in shape right so it is having apex this area is known as apex even you can see here in this diagram the apex part we have the base part which is wrapping near the metacarpophalangeal joints it is having two margin that is known as the medial margin and the lateral margin the apex part right apex part it it trifurcates right it divides into three bands that is known as central band and the two lateral band on the either side so this trifurcation near the apex part takes place near the distal end of the proximal phalanges now both the lateral band attach together right and goes and attach to the dorsal aspect of base of the distal phalanges while the central band goes and attach to the dorsal aspect of base of the middle phalanges while the medial margin medial margin of the dorsal digital expansion gets the insertion of one of the interosseous muscle and from the lateral aspect or in the lateral margin it gets the insertion of the interosseous muscle and the lumbricals muscle keep in mind that lumbricals muscles is inserted from the lateral margin only so you can see here in the diagram this is known as the lumbricals muscle the lumbricals muscles cross the dorsal ya fir deep transverse metacarpal ligament from the palmar aspect and attach to the dorsal digital expansion from the radial side 
while if you see this one is known as the introsseous muscle it can be palmar introsseous or it can be dorsal introsseous muscle so the both the introsseous muscle cross the deep transverse metacarpal ligament that is from the dorsal aspect and goes and attach the dorsal digital expansion from the either side action of dorsal digital expansion flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joints and extension at interphalangeal joints the dorsal digital expansion forms a functional unit to coordinate the action of long extensor long flexor lumbricals and introsei on the digits let's know the action of lumbrical muscle it helps in flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joints and extension near the interphalangeal joints palmar introsseous muscles it is unipinnate and it is weaker compared to dorsal introsseous muscle it helps in adduction and flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joints and extension of interphalangeal joints same how we have the dorsal introsseous muscle it is bipinnate and it is stronger it helps in abduction flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joints and extension near the interphalangeal joints we have to know all these muscles or the action of all these muscles because all these muscles is attached to the dorsal digital expansion that's why it helps in flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joints and the extension at the interphalangeal joints some of the basic point what we have to understand here is the intrinsic muscles of the hand let's take the example of lumbricals palmar introsseous dorsal introsseous muscle is having a small motor unit it means it is supplied by single neuron single motor unit means this muscle is used for find skilled movement why dorsal digital expansion is important because it helps to control the movements during the find skilled work like writing playing guitar stitching even you can see here in the diagram here near the metacarpophalangeal joint there is a the flexion while near the interphalangeal joints it helps in extension of the joints